Hello everyone and welcome to some more testing in Realism Overall Sandbox. In this episode we are going to take a look at the Thrym Aerospace ITS. Previously I had tried out the KK Launchers ITS system. Of course this is the SpaceX ITS that is supposed to help colonize Mars. And the Thrym Aerospace system was recommended by viewers in the comments to the KK Launchers episode. And it does have some interesting features that uh, are worthwhile. So let's take a look at the good stuff that it has. First of all, a docking port. Um, and that's very important, obviously, because otherwise you can't refuel it. It's a nifty little docking port. It's a little bit small. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about trying to dock something this tightly, uh, especially with these bits poking out. Um, it, 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 I mean, technically there is clearance if you take a look at how it would dock. Uh, those should not hit if I'm actually good at docking, which, you know, uh, well, we'll see. Uh, well, uh, we might have to wait a little bit to see because first we have to make sure that this actually works out. The configuration I wrote for this is basically, in terms of numbers, identical to the KK Launchers one. And I have tried it out already uh, during live streams, so uh, it it works functionally but there is a matter of the launch script and tuning it uh, so I'm using KOS to launch it and that needs some tuning and of course we have to bring it back inside the atmosphere so that's another issue um, speaking of which of course we are loaded up uh, we've got lead ballast here 26,400 if I'm gonna try and bring it back I really don't want that on board because right now that's 400 tons of cargo that we aren't supposed to bring back into the atmosphere when we land this. So uh, I think maybe it's possible to offload that with ship manifest, but it doesn't actually show up as a resource here. Anyway, let me talk about some of the other positive features of this model. First of all, it's got the solar panels. So yes, um, we have those very distinctive solar panels. I don't know if I've positioned them quite right, but it's okay for now. And I'll have to review the actual electric chargers that those are supposed to provide. Um, you'll note RCS ports all over the place, and that's a bonus because we can slap the RCS ports anywhere. It's got these little RCS ports. I've configured it to methane and oxygen with a thruster power of 4 kilonewtons. And yeah, uh, I can slap them anywhere, and I have. <laughs> Uh, so that is a bonus on this model. Something I discovered about the KK Launchers model is that it, it doesn't have a proper uh, hitbox, I mean uh, a mesh collider, so that when you try and surface attach things it doesn't work. And this was important because I was actually intending on sort of combining these models because there are good things about the KK Launchers one and in particular the body flaps which this does not have uh, I really like the body flaps. In fact, uh, when I made my own ITS a while ago, I thought that body flaps were actually essential, and uh, they didn't have it in the video, but later on, Elon Musk said, yes, we do have body flaps, which is nice. Oh, you note the RCS thrusters on the bottom. Yes, I've put uh, immense heat shielding on these little guys. Uh, well, the internal temp I should probably increase, but they have a skin temp of 3,400. So yeah, the, the equal to the actual surface of the ITS ship itself. So yeah, no body flaps here. And the problem is that uh, the body flaps don't really attach very well. Um, here, I, I actually added surface attach to them. They didn't originally have surface attach. But the problem is uh, their, their center is sort of in here. They've got a node over here. And yeah, they're sort of weird. So those are the... Uh, those are the body flaps from the KK Launchers one. So I thought about trying to combine the models, uh, s but uh, putting those body flaps on here, I, I tried using the, the um, tools and it didn't work very well. I was able to get the sole panels on the KK Launchers one, but as far as getting the docking port on it, it was impossible. Um, it had that mesh collider issue where even though it had surface attach enabled, uh, I couldn't put the docking port on. There was no way to actually attach it, nor the RCS ports. Uh, they just wouldn't attach anywhere to it. So, yeah, that's that's where we're at. So there's no functional way of um, combining the good sides of both models. I do like the windows here and also the texture on the bottom. 
Um, the KK Launcher one has a bit more of a nice curve here. I don't mean to... I mean, th these are all great work, okay? And they're all work in progress, so please don't get me wrong. I understand completely that this is all work in progress. Um, and this is, uh, this is just a review of things as they are. Uh, and certainly no reflection on the excellent work that both modders have done. Uh, but anyway, yeah, nice little curve there for the Kiki Launchers one. Uh, one, one thing that irritated me a lot uh, was that this has uh, 42 individual engines with 42 individual nodes at the bottom instead of the three circles, you know, the outer ring, inner ring, and the center cluster, which uh, Kiki Launchers one has. The issue with that is action grouping. Um, you, you have to, yeah, so I have to action group these because eventually we're going to have to shut down the outer 21 and then the 14 and then the 7. Uh, we have to be able to toggle them and it's very cumbersome to make sure that you've got all of them. Uh, even if you have action groups extended, that will get all of the same type of engine. Uh, but of course they're all the same type of engine so you could get all 42 or you could get one of them but you can't get just 21 of them even with action groups extended so that's somewhat irritating uh, also that creates more lag because it's 42 parts instead of three so there's that but uh, yeah anyway the configuration making it was very straightforward it's uh, basically the same idea as with the KK launchers pack uh, there was a minor thing where because we have a docking port on this side and nothing on this side to counterbalance it I had to make this part very very light otherwise um, The whole ship would be a little bit unbalanced. I mean not hugely, but a little bit unbalanced um, I should mention that the these landing leg uh, pods are separate parts and that's good because when I do, oh, maybe I shouldn't put RCS ports there. Let me see. Uh, yeah, that is dodgy. Uh, yeah, I might have to review the positioning on that RCS port. But uh, I haven't put the RCS ports uh, in realistic places. I put them where I needed them uh, in order to make sure that it, this thing can maneuver. But yeah, uh, that's good because we can put some sort of aerodynamic uh, variables on it to help with the lift. But anyway, enough talking. Let me try and bring this out to the launch pad and see how it flies. Alright, so on review I decided to switch out the lead ballast for Avgas in the hope that um, Ship Manifest will be able to dump it once we get into orbit. Yeah, so it has a dump button. So once we get to orbit we'll dump that payload. Alright, I'm going to throttle down here and KOS. The good thing about having compatible uh, configurations for both of them is that not only in theory should I be able to mix and match parts uh, but also I can use the same script to launch it. But theory is not the same as practice. For instance the fact that uh, the shape of this is not the same for both of them means that I can't take one, uh, mod, one uh, mod's ship and use the other mod's launcher. So, yeah. Anyway. So, run ITS. Uh, the script is being told to a reserve fuel for landing the ITS launcher. And one of the side effects of having 42 engines is that the launch pad is much more likely to explode, I've noticed. But yeah, so it will reserve fuel and we'll see that. We'll pay attention to that. Another feature of the launch script now is that the ship will do a roll on the way up so that instead of facing upside down, it'll eventually, once we get to orbit, be right side up. Not necessarily what we want, depends on how you look at it. There's some audio static I'm hearing. I think that might also be the a feature of having 42, basically 42 sound effects going. I still would like the forward portion to be a separate part. 
and that would facilitate making sure that this thing can not only deal with the purposes that SpaceX intends for it, but that we, being Kerbal Peoples, can come up with some other fancy ideas about what to do with it. The lag isn't as bad as I thought it would be with 42 engines. The script has been told to limit G-forces after the first stage. It's a little bit complicated because the throttle range isn't the real throttle range of, in other words, what you see here isn't actually the range of the engine throttle because uh, for the Raptor engines the bottom end is at 20%. So if I tell the tell the script to throttle down to 80%, it's not really 80%, it's like 80 something percent. Okay, I guess it's 4G's. goes and if we take a look here it's reserved uh, more than 10% of the fuel that's all right I allowed it to reserve as much as possible while still retaining enough to get to orbit with 400 tons of cargo so we could have used the first stage for a longer period of time but this is uh, strictly what we actually need to get to orbit so this is all right not effects I've got the center engines running I thought about maybe um, having a little bit of gimbal on the vacuum engines to simulate the fact that they actually have that um, what you got throttling ability in order to maneuver. In other words, they actually vary their throttle specifically to maneuver the craft. But we have no good way of simulating that in here right now. So maybe just adding gimbling is the best thing we can do, maybe one degree or something like that. And then if we just add one degree of gimbling on these vacuum engines, we wouldn't need the center engines, which are not as efficient, running right now. Right now, the center engines have 361 seconds of vacuum ISP, and the vacuum engines have 382. At 120 kilometers, it'll begin the roll which, uh, frankly, Kerbal Space Program is always bad at rolls, so we'll hope that it's, uh, you can see, uh, even as it rolls, it's sort of yawing a bit, which it doesn't need to do. It's sort of wobbly, and it's very hesitant about the whole thing. I mean, it's not maxing out the roll, I made sure of that. That would be bad, but it's still very wobbly when it tries to roll. I wonder why that is, why uh, everything in KSB seems to, I mean as far as the automated system like Smart ASS, SAS, and KOS, they always have issues with the role. Right now it's maneuvering to make sure that it doesn't uh, end up with a high apoapsis, so it's got pitched down a bit. It is throttling down as well as you can see. It would be better if we could shut down the center engines and still be able to maneuver, but the RCS system is not powerful enough to maneuver uh, with the vacuum engines on. In other words, if the vacuum engines for some reason aren't straight through the center of mass, the RCS thrusters are not good enough to handle that, is really what I mean. And of course, as the fuel load goes down, it depends. I mean, it's possible that the center mass stays right down the middle of this the whole way. There's no reason for it. Well, there's a mild reason for it not to, right? Because you've got two down here and one up there. Uh, they are symmetric. But you take a look at it, and with only the three center engines gimbling, it sure has trouble staying stable right now. doesn't really like the situation too much, but it'll be serviceable for the time being. It's when it gets close to orbit that it needs to make the maneuvers uh, quicker. And... off. Uh, 280... It's alright, it's alright big guy. Alright, sorry, uh, for some reason I thought I had throttled down earlier, but apparently not. Anyway, uh, 280 by 174, and the program is out. We have uh, 548 meters per second to come back, but that's while we have the av gas in. Let's dump our cargo.
and then we'll do the all-important re-entry testing. Now something I added uh, to both the KK Launcher's configuration and this one since the last time I tested one of these ITS mods is a descent mode. So that will actually shift the center of mass so that we can maintain a, a normal shuttle-like orientation when we're going through re-entry but then when we come down to landing we can turn that off and that will shift the center of mass back again and that will allow us to land tail first. Okay, the av gas is gone and from 500 meters per second we now have 1,300 meters per second having dumped the cargo. Our current mass is 248 tons and you can see the solar panels out right now and we're doing sort of a barbecue roll here and our electric charge is well balanced. Now there was um, real fuels or realism overhaul type script that uh, Thrim Aerospace itself provided for this but it was a work in progress. I took a look at it and I, I think it's uh, I, I've definitely done uh, more in terms of thermal stuff and like the descent mode thing. There's a lot of fidgety things in realism overhaul. The, the script that comes with it is more uh, just for real fuels which is good. Uh, I don't think my numbers are the same as the numbers in that but we don't really know the numbers for the system as far as burn times is, uh, is concerned. Uh, the fuel mass of course is correct uh, but the first stage in particular we don't know how long it burns for and how much fuel it would really carry. Uh, we know the total mass of the system but there's a lot of other question marks involved even for SpaceX itself since it hasn't built it yet. My configuration is meant for the KSP 1.1.3 version of this mod and so, because of course Realism Overhaul has not been released for uh, 1.2 yet and so take that into consideration when using it it is only suited for 1.1.3 and thankfully 3 Mirror Space provided a 1.1.3 version of the entire mod so that's nice okay I think it's time to try and bring this back down and see what happens this I have, had, I have not done successfully so this is uh, so many things I have not been able to re-enter successfully so far in 1.1.3. I've got uh, the SES space shuttle, my uh, new young space shuttle, uh, all ITS systems. It's, uh, it's rough, it's rough. Okay, we're coming in from a fairly low periapsis, so we should be shallower rather than steeper. Okay, uh, RCS on now, finally. Retrograde and we should be able to see the RCS working, it is. At this point we should retract the solar panels. Well, let's wait until we actually get into the atmosphere. Okay, we happen to be at retrograde anyway. Alright. Um, I could probably use the backward facing thrusters to deorbit right now. We are at our apoapsis, so, so we're not that shallow. I thought we were closer to periapsis, but we're not that shallow. Let's be gentle with it though. Okay, it is taking too long. Uh, let me try running the engines briefly. Yeah. Okay, well that did too much. I don't really have forward-facing thrusters right now though. I couldn't figure out where to put it to make it look okay. So let's turn prograde. And then we'll have to boost that periapsis up a little bit. Well, maybe 52 kilometers is not bad, actually. 52 kilometers. Well, this doesn't exactly have much lift, does it? You can see that even with all the RCS ports that I placed on this, it's not exactly holding very well. Okay, so as we turn descent mode on, you should visually be able to see the center of mass shift forward. There you go. See? The camera shifts with the center of mass. So now the center of mass should be in front of our center of lift so that we go in like a space plane. I think I'll keep the periapsis to 56 and we'll see how that goes. I think you can enable the scent mode in the VAB and see the center of mass shift in there as well. So that's good. I believe that's the case. So you can plan for that. 
already is rolling and yawing. Um, you know what? Let me try and stabilize it myself first, and then let Smart ESS do the rest. You can see it doesn't. You know, SAS is actually much better at it, but there's the matter of following the prograde vector as as we continue on. It's actually going to move this way, and handling that manually is annoying. Okay, you can see where we currently are. Uh, 123 kilometer altitude and we're a little bit south of Cape Canaveral after one orbit periapsis hovering right there I wonder if I have trajectories in here probably not one thing I tried to do with my own ITS that I would love if uh, if a mod did is like, like I, I'm always interested in reconfiguring this forward portion and if it was sort of like a cargo bay like it had like pedals opening up uh, I tried to do that with uh, Inferno Robotics and um, sort of uh, using the procedural fairings to try and make something that opens up but it wasn't very stable it, it looked great in the VAB but once you brought it out to the launch pad it all flopped apart uh, but yeah there's something like that sort of petal like flower like cargo bay where you could put stuff in and maybe put a crane in so that I could take the stuff out when, you, when you've landed you could actually manually take the stuff out and place it on the surface that could be really cool or um, maybe some way of fitting a, a, a manipulator arm on it you could see doing quite a variety of missions uh, the thing about just keeping it to SpaceX's plan is there's, you know, one very definite mission that it's supposed to do and not too much else, but this is a very useful craft, the potentially, uh, for cargo and doing stuff. And the more we get to actually place stuff inside, the more interesting it can get. All right, we are at 90 kilometers. We are getting some lift. You can see the vertical speed heading towards zero. So that's good because we're not really slowing down very much. I'd rather uh, spend some time at higher altitudes slowing down before we hit the lower altitudes. I suppose for landing, we really don't need the vacuum engines on. I wonder what our TWR is right now. I mean, I could calculate it, but we could just look. Um, so max TWR is 5.86 right now it's 4 I might have to give these vacuum en uh, not the vacuum engines, the sea level engines more throttling under the these circumstances it looks like being able to throttle down to 20% is not going to be enough because uh, right now if we were very close to being out of fuel um, even at 20% throttle it'd start going up so we don't want that well I don't know maybe maybe I mean of course with a computer system we could time it really really well and SpaceX could manage with a 20% throttle on a suicide burn kind of thing yeah it's more of a question about whether I could manage um, no I mean I guess it'd be alright I mean you have to defeat gravity after all it's not going to you want it above 1g we'll see hopefully uh, well we are now at 80 kilometers and I note that the pitch is close to being maxed out so that's not great roll and yaw are stable so even with all the RCS thrusters I placed here and they are firing away this is not enough and you know the bottom one's there too uh, something is overheating um, it looks like these side RCS thrusters that's interesting so the skin temperature is high for these but not the not the internal temperature Skin max temp is something I believe which is added by real heat or realism overhaul. Uh, normally they only have the internal, well, uh, the program does recognize the skin one as well. I don't, I don't really understand how it works, I just try and increase numbers if things are blowing up.
But right now, I think it's not a deal breaker to lose those, or even these. It's very interesting that those are overheating first and not these up front here. Well, currently we can only hold a 30 degree pitch instead of the 40 degrees I wanted. And we are approaching Baja, California. Okay, we're going to start to go up here before the RCS explodes. That's good. Actually, we're only going up because we can't hold our pitch any higher than this. Uh, if we were at 40 degrees, we'd be getting more drag and probably not as much lift. Oh, something exploded anyway. Uh, I believe that was an RCS thruster. Uh, it doesn't actually say. That's annoying. But yeah, it's, it was the RCS thruster right here. Those are only important for docking. The critical ones for what we're doing right now coming back in are these two and the ones on the tail. But you can tell because they are firing. Um, I suppose to some extent the one on, ones on the side right there are important just to control roll and yaw. Well, we are now heading out over to Gulf of Mexico and we are starting to go down again. Well, in a little bit. 80.7 kilometers in altitude. Not really slowing down very much yet. We've lost about 200 meters per second so far altogether. We're almost certainly going to overshoot uh, Cape Canaveral, and in any case, we would be too far south. This doesn't really have cross range ability. As far as I could tell, I can't. Re uh, even if we did a roll of some kind, I don't think we could turn our orbit towards Cape Canaveral like that. Oh, there's Florida. We're skirting right by it. Okay, that's gone. I think that's Cape Canaveral. Well, hopefully there's a barge out there somewhere. And a mighty big one. Mm, lots more overheating indicators now. As we haven't really slowed down enough. And we're maximizing pitch, but we can only maintain 20 degrees, so we need a lot more RCS power in order to do this. Which, it looks possible, considering our Delta V is, uh, we still have enough Delta V to run more RCS thrusters. If we double up the RCS thrusters, we might be able to do it. But now, even these front ones are overheating. Yeah, it's getting all bullet-like right now. This is the problem with all these ITSs. Uh, they, they do tend to want to become bullets instead of, uh, you know, lifting bodies. Oop. My general rule of thumb is I would like for if I divide the altitude by 10, for my speed, my surface velocity, not to be more than that. Obviously, we're way more than that right now. And maxing out our pitch authority. I mean, of course, body flaps would help at this point because they would at least create some more drag. Even the ones at the top are somehow overheating. Ah, but the engines. I really don't want the engines to overheat. 3G's. Practically no pitch authority, right? I mean, right now, we're basically aimed at the prograde vector and maxed out on pitch. It's really bad. 5G's. And spontaneous destruction of everything? Well, okay, the engine is still going strong. I, I really didn't expect spontaneous disassembly. That must have been aerodynamic stresses, but I won't say. 
Yeah, I guess it probably exploded due to aerodynamic stresses. That seems like a far thing to do, not a not a heating thing. Huh, there's a RCS pair. Well, um, yeah, so this is the state of things. I've put as much heat shielding as I thought reasonable. Possibly the thing to do is to um, add more RCS thrusters. Maybe shifting the center of mass a little bit further back instead of how far in front it is with the descent mode. You know, if it's closer to the center of lift, maybe it's easier for the thing to pivot. Uh, I could take a look at that. Right now, there's no reaction wheel in it. Uh, took that out because generally uh, reaction wheels are considered cheaty in realism overhaul. But uh, one thing you could do if you want to actually make it functional is to add the reaction wheel back in or strengthen the RCS thrusters. But I'll uh, link the configuration for the Thrim Aerospace one uh, for realism overhaul in the video description of this video. But clearly, it is not exactly serviceable yet. So take that into account. On that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.